Hi everyone, it's Carl Van Roon here at Van Roon Martial Arts. Thank you very much for tuning in today to this video on the tornado kick or 360 turning kick. In Korean, this technique is called the Naraban Chagi. In Japanese, it could be called Tatsumaki Yeri, which means tornado kick. This technique is a technique that's really close to my heart because I actually won a world title by knockout using this technique in one of the preliminary rounds. I was actually fighting a, a fighter who's now a very good friend of mine, he's from Japan, and he was trapped in the corner and I managed to pull this, um, pull this particular kick off. Now, it looks like a really fancy kick. It can look a little complex or a little bit intimidating, but once you get your head around a few key parameters for the correct biomechanics or the correct sequence of execution, I'm sure you'll pick this up in absolutely no time. So let's get into it. Let's start with the tornado kick practice for today's video. Thank you very much. Okay, so when I'm teaching my students to do the 360 turning kick or tornado kick for the first time, or they come to me with troubleshooting questions about how to make it more efficient or more effective so they can actually utilize it in sparring, I always like to look at cutting away the non-essentials. So what I mean by that is doing things with less effort but having a greater effect. So basically the definition of efficiency, right? Minimum input, maximum output. Let's try to think about how we can make the 360 turning kick or tornado kick really, really efficient. If you look at a lead leg turning kick or roundhouse kick that I'm going to throw to the body there, I might just flick up and hit it with my instep, right? This way, okay? So I'm coming around and I'm using my instep to strike this way. I want you to think of your tornado kick in the same way. So I want you to think about how you use this back leg to transport you in to strike and back out. If I did it from the side, I'm going like this. Right? I'm doing a skipping roundhouse kick or skipping turning kick. I like to call it a running kick. Now I covered this in some of my other videos already on this YouTube channel. But when you want to make it into a tornado kick, the big mistake that a lot of people make is rather than keeping it in a nice straight line like that, they try to do a big massive circle. And as they spin, they end up wasting a lot of energy. So rather than doing a big spin with my legs go right around like this, I want you to try to cut through the center. So the first thing that you're going to train is learning how to set up how to cut through the center. What are you going to do? You have to turn your front foot so that your heel cheats toward the target. So if I'm kicking towards you, I turn my heel towards you, then, I, then I, at the same time I'm turning my body and tucking my elbows in. I'm going to take my leg not around, but I'm going to take it up and under. And then I'm going to switch my legs so my foot comes up into a chamber this way. So let's have a look at that one more time. So I'm going to turn my front foot here. My arms are going to tuck in. I'm going to lift my leg underneath, straight through here, not around. And I'm going to switch my legs. I'm going to learn to land that position and then extend. Now let's have a look at how that would look on the target now. So I'm going to turn my front foot this way to the target with my arms tucking into my center. I'm going to take this leg up and under through here, switch my legs, and then I'm going to extend on the target with that tornado kick. Let's have a look at it one more time. Arms go not around like a tricker would do because that's going to telegraph my intention. Sure, it's going to build up a lot more momentum, but it's also going to show my opponent that I'm about to do a tornado kick. So let's take our arms directly in as you cheat the front foot towards the target, like we're setting up other spinning kicks that I've already taught you before. So as my arms come in, I'm going to bring them in, and then this leg is going to come up and under through the line, come with my foot in front. So now that we've worked through the basics of how to sequence the tornado kick, Let's look at a few options for recovery. The first and most obvious option, which I just used before, was to hit the target and then recover with your foot in front. Another option is for you to kick the target and recover with your foot in the opposite stance by just pulling it back, like a rear leg turning kick or roundhouse kick. Finally, a third option is to spin right through if you miss the target or you sort of graze the target. And I would say that all three recovery methods are important because your opponent will respond in different ways and you want to be versatile and able to recover depending on the kind of feedback you get from the opponent. 
So let's have a look at those three recovery options just quickly now, so you can take a note of those and practice them in your own time. So the first one, recovering in front, it's just what we did before. I might be moving like this, and I'm just recovering with my foot in front. Come with my foot in front. When I recover with my foot to the back, I'm gonna do the same sort of thing. I'm gonna spin through, but my leg is gonna come back into this opposite stance. So from here, I would have different options. I'd be able to also kick uh, straight back off my lead leg or use my hands from the orthodox side. Not that I couldn't in southpaw, but it gives me a different set of options depending on my personal repertoire. So that's important because sometimes you don't wanna fall forward into your opponent's attack. Sometimes by doing the 360 and recovering with your leg backwards, you create a little bit more space. And finally, the uh, final option is spinning through. Sometimes you'll miss the kick, and you should learn how to both control it, but also spin through if you really are throwing a authoritative or knockout finishing type blow. So let's look at that. If I'm gonna spin through, I'll probably take my arms in a bit tighter, and um, I'll spin through to the opposite stance. So I'm spinning through to the opposite stance, then recovering back to southpaw. So if it was slower, I'd kick through, come into orthodox and step back to southpaw. That's how I like to do it personally myself, but you should also learn how to recover in front and control the kick so it's not too wild. So to practice that, you want to throw it towards a, um, an imaginary target in, uh, in thin air, and you want to be able to stop your momentum. So try not to overcook your spin, just come up and underneath and just snap your knee out. Come up underneath and snap your knee out. So you're in control of the technique, making sure that it's not in control of you or leaving you vulnerable. So that's three different ways to recover. One, stepping in front. Two, kicking it and coming back into your stance on the opposite side. And three, spinning through and recovering if you miss that big haymaker shot. Now that we've established the ways to recover from the tornado kick, let's talk about some of the practical application of how you can use this technique. So let's say, for example, I'm looking to land a, uh, a back kick. Okay, so I'm looking to land a back this way, and the person is a little fixated on that. Now a back kick will only reach so far. A back kick will only reach so far. If I spin from here, for example, my leg will only reach to here. Of course, I could travel with it, I could slide and do more of a sliding side kick, but a 360, if, if done in a certain way, or a tornado kick, as we sometimes call it, I can cover that distance. So I might not be able to reach with this leg, but if I spin through, I can reach with my opposite leg. So that's one thing that often uh, catches people out. So a lot of time when you spin on somebody, when you spin at them, they'll move, they'll dodge out of the way. So what you can rely on is they spin out of the way and then you follow up with a 360. So that's one way to apply the 360 turning kick or tornado kick. Another great way to use this technique is when the person is trying to circle away from you, particularly if they're trapped in a corner or they're isolated, or even in a ring or a cage. When someone's restricted in terms of movement in mixed martial arts or in um, kickboxing, for example, and they're trying to go one way, they realize that they're a bit uh, restricted in their movement, and they might try to drift or circle off in the opposite direction. As they drift, that's when you can catch them with this kick. So you restrict their movement, you cut off one side, and they try to go in the opposite direction. So for example, if I move uh, Bob, or we commonly call him Gustav, coming over this way, and if you imagine that he was gonna circle to try to escape me. So let's say that I restrict his movement by coming over a little bit towards this side. So he wants to pull out, and as he does so, you intersect him, and he walks into the power, the arc of power for that technique. And that could be to the body, or that could be up to the head. Finally, there's one more application that we can use for the 360 turning kick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this foot back, and I'm gonna pop my ball of the foot into the ground, and I'm going to uh, lever up and pull just out of the way of an incoming attack. Then I'm going to tuck my arms in nice and tight and take my knee straight through the line up and underneath like we did before. But this time I'm pulling away. So if the attack was coming here, I'm going to pull here, 
turn up and under and extend. I'll show you that one more time. I'm going to pull away here, pop into the ground, arms tucked in nice and tight, leg goes underneath and snap it out. Let's have a look. So that's our final third option for ways to practically apply this. So just to recap, those three options for the application of this technique are to use it to cover distance, two, to use it when the person circles towards your blind side or your back side and you cut them off by spinning, three, to pull away from an attack, cheat your foot so you're already turning and counter with a spin. Of course, there's many other ways that you can apply the tornado kick or 360 turning kick slash roundhouse kick, but these are three ways that have been proven over time to be very effective. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, one of the personal highlights of my own martial arts career was scoring a knockout with this particular kick, and in that case, it was kind of a combination of these two things. My opponent from Japan was trapped in the corner of the fighting area, and I believe what happened was, I, as I spun, he read the first kick as a back kick to the body, something like this. He was anticipating something down low, and he kind of leaned and swayed a little bit to avoid it, and he took the full force of the high kick. So in that way, it's kind of combining two of those applications. When you see the video, of course, that may not be immediately apparent, because you might not be able to tell that he's trapped in a corner. So folks, thank you very much for tuning into this video on 360 turning kick or tornado kick. As usual, don't forget to subscribe and like this video and let me know what you thought of this particular technique. If you have any questions about the technique, please make sure that you reach out to us either here on YouTube or on social media with our Instagram, Van Roon Martial Arts. Thank you once again for tuning in and all the best for your training.